guys, John Sarberry here from the Fox News News Group at Moscow and Tom Bruce at N01. So I'm playing Bruce with two units at minus 115. And I think there's a lot of value on this play. So basically, this is going to be Brendan Allen's second UFC fight. Um, he came over to the UFC from LFA where he was the LFA champion for uh, quite a while. And, you know, he's got, I don't know, he's got a weird game. You know, in theory, he's a wrestle grappler, but he's not. So he's, if he's effective at landing takedowns, or he has been to date. But I actually don't think his entries as a wrestler are very, very good. You know, he gets fights to the ground more with a body lock than anything else. And, you know, once he gets the fights there, you know, he looks for submissions as much as he can. Um, he's really, you know, my issue with his grappling, though, is that he's really a submission over position grappler. And by that, I mean that he's so eager to advance to the next position and get to a place where he can threaten a submission, he often gives away a position on the mat. Um, this was not, there was no clear evidence in this in his match with Kevin Holland. Um, Holland himself is a decent grappler. It was a brown belt. But, you know, again, like not super, super high level and also similarly sloppy. But Allen, I saw a giveaway position three or four separate times in that fight and almost get submitted as a result of it. Um, and this was pretty prevalent on the, in his regional tape as well. You know, very, very frequently, you know, when he goes to your back, he immediately looks to throw hooks in, even if he's too high. Um, he'll look to pass, even if there's not an opportunity there, and just leave way too much space open. And so, you know, the problem is he's not a bad grappler. Uh, he's savvy enough as a submission grappler that, you know, he will beat low-level grapplers. Uh, he's just, you know, against better ones. He's going to struggle to control position. He's going to often find himself getting reversed. Um, in terms of stand-up, Allen doesn't bring a whole lot to the table. Basically, he just wants to kind of rush in, lock up the clinch, and he'll throw clinch strikes from there, which are going to be decent. You know, he got to finish on his contender series of clinch knees. Um, but that's really, like, you know, what he's looking to do is just get to the clinch and try to drag you to the mat. Um, on the other side of the coin, Tom Brees... Oh, so, at any rate, Allen's striking is very sloppy. So, like, basically, he's super hittable. And, yeah. So, like, I don't think he's, you know, he's not... It, the stats even reflect that, you know, in his one fight in the UFC at distance, you know, he's only landed, he only landed about two significant strikes a minute and received about three and a half. Um, we saw that in his tape in LFA too, where, you know, anytime he was forced to stand for an extended period, people would tee off on him. So basically, you know, he's a grappler who has pretty poor striking. Uh, on the other side of the coin, we have Tom Brees. And Brees is interesting. So Brees, I think, as an actual talent in terms of what his ceiling would could potentially be if you realize that talent is probably a top 10 ranked fighter in the middleweight division uh, maybe even a little higher i don't think he's probably i don't think he's championship material but he's got a lot of really good attributes uh you know he's so he's as a striker brief striking is i don't know if i call it elite but it's very good he's extremely crisp boxing uh to some decent kicks you know he's got a lot of power you know we've seen him finish i think uh, three or four of his fights in the ufc i think three of his fights in the ufc he's finished and, you know, he's just, you know, great head movement. He's defensively sound. You know, he's just a very good striker. Um, you know, and in the clinch where, you know, you expect this fight to play out a lot, you know, he's got, you know, he'll, he will work in the clinch. You know, he'll throw knees, he'll throw elbows, he'll throw punches. And so overall, I'd rate his, you know, his stand up is, he's got plus stand up and, you know, very strong finishing ability. Uh, on the mat, Brees is far better than Brendan Allen. So he's, you know, as he's a high level black belt, you know, he got his black belt when he was training at TriStar where he used to, you know, roll with Rory McDonald and you know, Gary Tonin all the time. Uh, he, I believe, I want to say he won the um, IBJJF for purple belts, you know, when he was coming up. I had a wrestling background. But basically, he's got elite jujitsu. Uh, he doesn't use it a whole lot because Brees doesn't really look to, you know, get fights to the mat that often, you know, because his stand up is so good. But it is elite and you know the few times we've seen him forced to go to the mat he's been incredibly effective with it so in terms of his actual wrestling you know he's got decent wrestling from top position and good idea and you know a good idea of you know positional control but from what we've seen on the tape he's not the best defensive wrestler and you know this is where such bjj come into play so his last or two fights ago he fought kind of uh Kido nakamura and Nakamura was able to drag him down via the body lock three times. And that's, you know, kind of a bit concerning as Allen is also, you know, makes a living on getting takedowns from the body lock. 
But when he did that, Nakamura is actually a very high level black belt on the ground. And him on top of you is the last thing you want. And yet all three times he was able to take Brees down. Brees was able to grab a leg and turn it into a heel hook in reverse position and end up getting some top time out of it. And you know, he basically dominated the grappling exchanges with the guy who I would rate personally as a better submission grappler than Brendan Allen is. And so, so basically what I'm getting at here is, you know, I do think, you know, Allen might be able to get this fight down, but I think Brees is a much better grappler than him, and I think he's a much better striker. Basically, I think he's significantly better everywhere. And so the question then becomes, well, if I think that, you know, why is it only a two-unit play, number one, and why is the line so narrow? And so I'm sure everybody's seen this, but, you know, Brees has had a, reportedly had major issues with anxiety. He's pulled out of his last two fights on fight day due to it. Uh, he's only fought once in the last four years. So, you know, I, you know, I know he's been doing grappling competitions of late, so I think he'll make the walk here. And, you know, he's only fought once in four years, so that is a concern for me, obviously. And so... If it wasn't for that fact, the fact that he might be rusty and that we don't know where his head is at, I'd probably cap Reese legitimately at minus 350 here. Like, Allen, like Allen's only pass to victory or either a fluky knockout or to, you know, get a ton of cage push and just drag Brees down over and over. The thing is, as I mentioned, you know, Allen leaves a lot of space in his offensive grappling and he gets reversed by just about everybody. And Brees is probably the best grappler he's faced in his career. And so it's like, it's hard for me to believe Allen's going to be able to get the top time or threaten submissions with, uh, you know, in enough volume against Breeze to consistently win rounds. You know, he could, you know, it is possible that this comes into a dirty fight with a lot of reversals and, you know, maybe Allen's able to steal a couple rounds like that. I, but I just ultimately, I don't think that's very likely based on the tape, uh, unless Allen's leveled up his game in a massive way. And... So speaking of leveled up, you know, Brees, he's only fought once in four years. But he's only 28 years old. And so this is a guy who's still making improvements. And it's very well within the range of possible outcomes that he's got, he's dramatically improved his takedown defense. And if that's the case, he can keep it standing in for any period of time. He's going to light Allen up. Uh, consequently, I think he's got to be capped as a major favorite here. Uh, I don't think, I can't play him as aggressively as I normally would just purely because, you know, of obviously the mental issues and the fact he's only fought once in four years. Uh, but I am playing him for two units at minus 115. It's a pretty confident play. And I, you know, like I said, I just don't think Allen has a lot of very viable paths to victory here. And so, you know, it's two unit play, minus 115. My prediction is going to be a breeze by second round knockout. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And, you know, if you liked it, if you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.